Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly D6 uh, Bible study. And uh, today we're going to be looking in the Gospel of John and also the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, the title of the lesson is An Endless Supply. And uh, our objective today is that we really want you to walk away from this and understand that Jesus has the power to do whatever is necessary uh, to accomplish God's will and to meet our needs. And so remember our family theme uh, over the last few um, weeks has been Jesus works miracles. And of course, we still believe he does that. Uh, but we certainly know he did that uh, in his earthly ministry uh, as he was uh, introducing himself to people and uh, helping people uh, come to faith in him. Uh, our Bible basics this week, things that we should know. I hope that you've been uh, reviewing the scripture verse, uh, John uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and um, this week, and work with family members to maybe put that in your heart. And then one of the things that we have been talking about is how this particular lesson fits into uh, uh, the, the story of the Bible. The lesson is set during the life of Christ on earth and it examines how he demonstrated his miraculous power and actually met needs fulfilling uh, the Old Testament uh, prophecies about him. So I want to begin today by asking you a couple of questions. First, um, uh, when, when has God told you to do something that you uh, didn't think that you would be able to do? Um, and then how has God strengthened you or helped you to do those things you weren't sure you could do? And, and so when I think about that, um, you know, for instance, when we, when we think about uh, how we would answer that, we might, in that first question, we might come up with something like being able to forgive someone who has hurt us deeply or or maybe saying no to a habitual sin and, and um, or putting others' needs uh, before your own needs. And, and so I hope that as you answer that, those questions that you can see how God has helped you along the way to be able uh, to do those things. And so uh, today we're going to see how God gave his disciples an impossible task and then showed them uh, that he could supply what was needed to get the job done. And, uh, of course, these were ways that Jesus was increasing their faith and uh, building their trust in him. And so the first thing we want to do is look in Matthew chapter 14, and we want to uh, look in verses 13 and 14. And this is what the Scripture says. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart, and when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Now if you look in uh, John chapter 6, we're going to see uh, in that, uh, that passage, we're going to look at the first five verses, and it says, And these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee uh, after these things, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto him, Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And so the first thing we, we want you to know is that, that we need to know that Jesus cares. He saw these individuals and he was, you know, moved with compassion on them. He had compassion uh, on them. And, and so when we, when we zoom in and look at Matthew chapter 14, and uh, verse 14, we need to remember that God loves and has compassion for all people and desires that they come to know him, that they're saved and walk in a close relationship uh, with him. And so as we think of how we can uh, look at Jesus' compassion, look at the things that he did, 
and, and how to apply that, we need to understand that he knows our needs and he has compassion for us. How did Jesus show that he cared about the people who were interrupting his plans? Well, he delayed his own plans. Uh, he delayed his own plans and focused on meeting their needs. You know, almost everywhere Jesus went, there were interruptions, and he was willing to stop and talk with people. He remembered that his mission was about people, and we need to remember that. We need to remember in times that we don't want to be interrupted, we don't want to be bothered, that, that God has left us with a mission that involves people, getting the gospel to people, meeting people's needs so that they will be attracted to Jesus who loves them and has compassion for them. And so how can we demonstrate compassion to those in uh, need around us? Well, first of all, we've got to ask. We've got to be willing to ask uh, what those needs are uh, and then what we can do once we identify those needs, uh, such as hunger, uh, sometimes their financial needs, sometimes their, their medical needs, sometimes their emotional needs. Uh, there, there are other physical needs that sometimes we can help with, but we have to identify them and then uh, set out on a course uh, and a plan to be able to help meet those needs. Now, as we go further and, and we look in, in Matthew, the second thing is we need to take problems to Jesus. Uh, in, in chapter 14, of Matthew and verse 15 and 16 it says and when it was evening his disciples came to him saying this is a desert place and time is now past send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals and when it was evening his um, or, or but Jesus said unto them they need not depart give you them to eat and then over in the uh, account in John chapter 6 and verse 6 and 7, says Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them make, may take a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, uh, and um, it says, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And of course, in verse 6, it says, And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus uh, asked those questions or told them to sit down uh, and, and feed them or to, to feed the multitudes because he knew exactly what he was going to do. He wanted to test their faith and their resolve and, and get them to think about uh, even who he was and how he could meet their need. And so... We take the problems uh, to Jesus. And, and, and so here, this is what they did. They simply took the problems to Jesus. And we need to apply it in a way uh, in our own lives that when we have problems, even though we have friends and family and pastors and church leaders and friends and all kinds of uh, things, even when they are... Uh, financial needs, we have banks and we have uh, people who can loan us money or we have uh, doctors for physical needs. The first thing we need to do is go to Jesus and ask him for help. How did Jesus use a problem to teach his disciples to depend on him? Well, he told them to feed the huge crowd, uh, you know, which probably stumped them immediately. Uh, and he told them to feed them when they had almost absolutely nothing to do this with. So what do we learn from this? Well, he has great power to work miracles. He can meet people's needs. He wants us to depend on him. And that's what we, that's what we learn from this. We don't learn that Jesus is just trying to, um, you, you know, discourage them by the question. He's trying to teach them something about who he is, where their source is. Uh, their sources come from, who can meet everybody's need, regardless of how great or small it is. He's trying to teach that uh, to, the, to the disciples. And so we need to ask Jesus for help when we are facing problems. And then we need to trust Jesus' miraculous power. Back in Matthew 14, in verse 17, it says, And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples uh, to, uh, to the multitude. 
And in verse 20, it says, And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained twelve baskets full, and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And so we go over to John uh, chapter 6 and look in verse 8, and it says, One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them uh, together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten." Then those men, which they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. And so you think about this. We call this the feeding of the 5,000, but Matthew's account says that it was 5,000 men besides women and children. He could have fed as many as 20,000 plus, uh, but we know that it's not the number that's important. It's the fact that we should trust the miraculous power of Jesus to do things when we may not be able to do them ourselves. How do we apply it? And, and of course, first we, we zoom in on this, uh, this particular um, lesson in this uh, because this will help us develop our worldview, and that is this. Jesus is the sovereign Lord of all. You know, we've been in an election week that has lasted more than a day, obviously, and there are many people that their, their emotions are heightened, uh, you know, from the president to the, the local offices, people voted and their candidate didn't get voted in, and people are upset and people are all kinds of things, and people are wondering, how are we going to, to make it if, if they believe one uh, worldview and another worldview, and uh, they believe in certain things, and and they think, well, if this person is elected, how are we going to function? And, and people just get all upset. And we need to remember that Jesus Christ is the sovereign Lord of everyone, of everything. He is the sovereign Lord over all. His, his task has not changed. His will has not changed. His, uh, his ability to meet needs and to uh, meet uh, in what needs that seem impossible have not changed. And so here's how we apply this. If that is true, and we believe it is, then we need to offer what we have to Jesus knowing that he can meet the need. He can take our little and make it much. He can take our nothing and make it everything. And so, you know, we, we need to understand that. Um, you know, what needs are easy to trust Jesus for? And then what needs are hard? You know, those are extremely um, good questions. You know, we don't have too much trouble uh, trusting Jesus when the needs are not overwhelming. Um, we don't have too much difficulty when it seems to be an easy path. But how about those needs that are difficult? And, and think about this. Think about this as we dig deeper into how Jesus did this. Think about this. He healed sicknesses and diseases. He corrected infirmities. He controlled the elements of nature. He cast out demons. He raised people from the dead. He did all of that. And so as we think about how to live the truth of this lesson, uh, which has been very simple, just a simple story about feeding people. Jesus turned five loaves and two fishes into feeding 5,000 plus people, and there, were, there was enough for each disciple to have a basket full. How do we uh, live this out? Well, I think there's a couple of questions we could ask. How is it especially meaningful to know God loves and cares for us? You know, all of us want to be loved and cared for. And I think all of us have had people in our lives that we thought loved and cared for us that we found out later they really didn't. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus will always love you and he will always care for you. Um, I want you to share this week with someone, 
start in your family, but share it with a friend, um, how much Jesus loves them and how he has met your needs. Let that be part of your testimony this week. And then the second part of that is we live it out. That's, that's how it affects our thinking, is to wake up every day knowing that God loves us and that he will help meet our needs for, the, for, for that day. But then we sort of put feet on that, and, and how could you demonstrate compassion and seek to meet someone's need this week? How could you demonstrate compassion on someone that you come in contact with, someone at work, someone in your neighborhood, somebody you go to school with, somebody you, um, uh, you're a close friend with, a family member, and how could you meet that need? I want to encourage you to share the love of Jesus again with somebody and then meet a need. Uh, it, it, you might not be able to meet an enormous <clears throat> uh, need that somebody has, but look around, be conscious of those around you, and maybe try to meet a small need. You know, when Jesus meets our needs, it's always enough. Uh, and the, the truth is, he can meet my need and yours at the same time, and the whole world's need. Of course, the greatest need we have is salvation, and hopefully he has met that need in your life as you've placed your trust in him. But there's not a need that you have today that Christ cannot meet. There's not a need you have. Now, we don't always know when he'll meet it. We don't always know how he'll meet it. And sometimes he meets those needs according to his will, not according to ours. And I think one of the difficulties we have many times when we think God is not meeting our needs is because we've got the definition of needs all mixed up. God does give us some of our wants. But when it comes to needs, we must really understand that a need is something that is necessary. A need is something that is not just a desire or something that um, you, know, you really don't need, but you'd like to have it. So I think you have to examine your needs. Uh, what do you really need this week that you need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you to intervene here. I need you to meet this need. I, I'm asking you to meet this need. Show me uh, you know, how I can uh, you know, interact with you and how I can, can do my part for these needs to be met. And then ask the Lord this week to help you identify somebody that has a need. And then ask him, Lord, how could I meet this need? And I believe that God will honor that this week as you work together uh, to live out this story of Jesus um, meeting the needs of a hungry crowd. Uh, you can also download a parent page if you're interested in working with your children to, to further develop this truth at d6home.com. I also sent it to you in an, an email earlier in the week. And I trust that you will get into the word this week with your children, your grandchildren, and remind them God is sovereign Lord over all, and his needs are met with an endless supply for everyone uh, that will cry out to him that has a legitimate need. He will answer uh, and your prayers and meet your needs according to his riches and glory and according to his needs. It will always be met. Your needs will always be met by God uh, in, in, with, with it in mind, with, with God having in mind your good and his glory. God bless you for joining us. We hope you'll join us at 1030 this morning for our live stream, or hopefully you can come in person, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on campus at 1030. God bless you.